to Tuesday story time. Our theme for today is MLK Spotlight. Today we will focus on books about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. As we know, Dr. King fought for civil rights and equality and we just want to spend some time learning about him through books. Memphis Martin and the Mountaintop. For when people get caught up with that which is right, and when they are willing to sacrifice for it, there is no stopping point short of victory. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So this story was mined from history books and the memories of a Memphis teacher. When she was a child, she marched in the Memphis sanitation strike with her mother and father. Men, women, and children contributed to the strike in 1968. Whole families sacrificed their comforts. They suffered for the cause. However, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. paid the highest cost. He gave his life to the struggle for freedom and justice. Memphis, 1968. I remember Memphis. I remember the stinking sanitation strike. Alley cats, rats, and dogs rummaged through piles of trash. Black men marched through Memphis with protest signs raised high. I also marched in 68 with red ribbons in my hair. I remember Memphis and legions of noble men. I remember broken glass and the voice of a fallen king. Fire, smoke, and ashes raveled midnight cityscapes. Black men march for honor, and I must tell the story. You must tell the story so that no one will forget it. Marching orders. Memphis sanitation workers shared one common trait. Like my daddy, most of those men were black. They carried rusted garbage barrels as slop dripped down their clothes. White managers called them ugly names, too ugly to repeat. The average pay for sanitation workers was $1.70 an hour. Daddy called it starvation pay. Even with a full-time job, he needed government help to buy groceries for our family. Sanitation workers formed a labor union to advocate for their rights. Better pay seemed close at hand. The labor union encouraged better treatment and safety on the job. But the men faced opposition from Memphis Mayor Henry Loeb. A tall, giant-like, stubborn man like a mule. Mayor Loeb said no to a pay increase. He did not acknowledge the Workers' Labor Union and the Ameri American Federation of State, County, Municipal Employees, Local 1733. To insult the men even further, the mayor gave little assistance to the Cole and Walker families. They could take the abuse no more. 1,300 men deserted their garbage barrels. They organized a labor strike. And on February 12, 1968, in the morning and afternoon for 65 days, the sanitation workers marched 14 blocks through the streets of downtown Memphis. From Claiborne Temple to the steps of City Hall, they squared their shoulders, raised their heads, and carried their picket signs. My daddy marched in that number. He marched for better pay. He marched for decent treatment, and my daddy marched for me. Martin. My daddy was a sanitation worker. My mama was a maid. Neither one of them read very well or finished high school. Lifting garbage and cleaning houses was all the work they could find. When mama's boss paid her wages, it was on Friday afternoons. He also put old magazines and newspapers in her carry bag. Mama gave the papers to me and I would read the headlines to both my parents and we'd follow the strike. I read the headlines that early March when strike negotiations failed, but daddy's soles wore thin on his mountain climb. There came a spark of light. Good news filled the air. Reverend James Lawson, a cum advisor, called his old friend Martin to Memphis. The headlines encouraged my parents. Daddy buzzed around the house. Dr. King is coming to town. Mama told Miss Brooks, our neighbor, girl, I can't believe it. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. practiced nonviolent protests. 
He was a champion for social change who marched for racial equality across Mississippi, Alabama, and Washington, D.C. It was his persistent demand for justice that inspired President Lyndon B. Johnson to help abolish segregation and sign the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Since Martin had conquered giants in the Valley of Injustice, Reverend Lawson believed his powerful friend could help the striking men. It was my silent prayer as I leaned against my daddy's knee and read the news out loud. I'm climbing. My daddy was a dreamer. Dr. King was a dreamer too. When the Memphis March turned into a riot, the disappointment leader left the city. But he promised to return. He promised to lead a peaceful march in support of striking workers. And as Dr. King made his new plans to protest, death threats rattled his ears. Somebody wanted to kill his dream for economic freedom for the working poor. Threats did not stop his mountain climb. And on April 3rd, 1968, Dr. King kissed his wife and children. And he left his Atlanta home and boarded a flight to Memphis. I was there on that stormy night Dr. King returned. Clouds blotted out the stars in the Memphis sky. Wind whipped through the bending trees. My daddy beamed with hope and he told mama Dr. King is going to preach tonight at Mason Temple Church. In daddy's blue car, he sputtered through the pounding rain. We chugged through bursts of lightnings and the shrill of tornado sirens. When we entered the church, a preacher named Abernathy stood at the microphone. He was Dr. King's best friend. On that stormy night, he delivered terrible news. Dr. King was sick and resting in a motel room. Rain soaked faces grumbled. My daddy did not drive through the sheets of the rain to hear Dr. King's friend. He wanted to hear Dr. King. As the crowd listened to the speeches about the strike, I slept in mama's arms. Kaboom, a voice like the evening thunder shook me from my sleep. It was Dr. King, Moses, like Moses on the mountain. He charged men and women and children to make the world a promised land flowing with freedom and justice. Like a man preaching his own funeral, Dr. King used vivid words to paint the story of his life. He described his challenges and triumphs during the civil rights movement and in the face of death threats, Dr. King spoke boldly. He encouraged the Memphis strikers to strike supporters to march, boycott, and raise their voices for workers' rights until victory was won. His voice booms, I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people, we will get to the promised land. The crowd rose up with a deafening shout. My daddy, I hope you have been inspired by the excerpts that I read from that book. And maybe you are like Dr. King and you have a special dream for the world. I know that you will do amazing things. As always, thanks for joining me. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.